Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover today, from the sun to earthquakes to news articles. And if you missed last night's video, it is critical. China launched an electromagnetic earthquake forecasting satellite, and you won't believe some of the science involved. This video is linked for you below. We also had an amazing news article yesterday we'll revisit today because it's just that important. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. While they haven't produced anything major yet, the bright regions incoming from the left side, the eastern limb, are slightly raising the solar flare x-ray flux this morning. We'll be eyeing them today as we now come check out solar wind telemetry. Definitely coming out of the coronal hole stream now and Earth's geomagnetic system is calm and quiet. The departing equatorial coronal holes would have their wind arrive at Earth tomorrow or Monday, if indeed it intensified the plasma stream. And speaking of streams, let's come to Nine Reese Soho Processing. You might recall that NASA and NOAA are without processing for the public for weeks as they do their upgrades, and so we've got the raw data and we'll bring those to you. By the way, the large object visible on C3 is Venus. It is currently heading out of that frame to the left, while in the next four or five days we're going to see Mercury come into that frame from the right side as it is set to conjoin the Sun mid-month. Looking quickly at Stereo A, currently four months behind our orbit and able to see what's going to be turning in to face Earth on the Sun. Solid coronal hole visible there. We'll probably be seeing that one by next weekend. Let's go to the ESA where they want to put a satellite permanently in a similar position to Stereo for these similar reasons, to see what's coming on the Sun and also to get a side view of CMEs that would be coming at Earth. At the L5 point it would not need to burn thrusters, just orbit and watch. And from that position it would indeed be perfectly placed to see what is coming up next to face Earth and it would fortify CME tracking by helping to gauge plasma speed and the breadth of the ejecta. Let's come down to the ground where we took a magnitude 6 event yesterday, luckily again well away from harming people. This one struck beneath a powerful low that crossed New Zealand and which we'd been eyeing for a week since it was well north of there near Vanuatu. Also having an odd uptick in the North Atlantic this week, even odder that these can't be cryoseisms out on the water, just a subterranean disruption and swarm. Folks, here is the paper that goes with yesterday's top article release. The actual paper didn't come out for a few hours after the news, but it is the breakdown of why we now have three galaxies where the dwarf satellites debunk the dark matter model in their non-chaotic polar preferred orbits. Andromeda, Milky Way, and Centaurus A do not follow the rules, and it is the observations of the universe we hope you'll remember that trump the mathematics and modeling. Coming next to HD 5980. Scientists are glad they checked back in on this guy after a major stellar wind collision brightened the binary pair in x-rays more than a decade ago. Observations ceased for a period, but when they kicked back in last year, they found the region glowing much brighter than before, long after the explosive event had ended. They say the slowdown of expansion and lack of instabilities in the collision space is leading to post-mortem heating and excitement of the remaining matter, allowing x-ray glow to increase. Last two stories here. First is one that isn't going to make any friends in the quantum physics world. However, if you read the analysis, it is difficult for one not to reach the same conclusion. That the complex math and modeling is akin to pseudoscience, it has no basis in reality and in actuality harkens back to a conversation between Einstein and Niels Bohr. On the same, that thing doesn't work line of thinking, the standard viscous disk model around galaxies must be abandoned. The drag, heating, and motion of the material in the disks cannot be reconciled with standard accretion disk science. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your Fly on the Wall podcast coming up in just a few hours, and at 9 a.m. Eastern Time U.S., we will be on the chat page for the pre-show discussion. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our start to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.